Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit View Time. Today we've got something I've wanted to do for years. I mean proper long time on this one and finally got my hands on one. So what have we got? We've got here the Tamiya 132nd Mitsubishi M, sorry, A6 M2B0, also known as the Model 21. Now, bit of a backstory to this one. Two things. One, in all the years I've been a professional modeler now, which is just over 20 years, I've been doing this as a full-time job, I've always wanted to build a zero. And then you would like a lot of you, uh, especially back in the noughties, um, it was obviously in the Tamiya catalogue, and it looked absolutely beautiful, but I've never had an opportunity to actually build one. I was never commissioned to build one or anything else like that. So unfortunately, it's always been, you know, put on the back burner and things like that. Then a couple of years ago, I saw a fantastic film, and if you haven't seen it, go and check it out. It's on Netflix and Amazon and all the rest of it, called Eternal Zero, which is an absolutely beautifully done film, okay? And I'm not gonna go into the ins and outs of it and all the rest of it. It's just one of those films where if you're into World War II, aviation, anything else like that, and you've got a thing obviously for zeros, you wanna see that particular film. It's actually a very, very moving film, okay? So I saw that. Then obviously, being co-owner in a model shop, it was like, we haven't got a 30 second zero in the store, we need to get one in. And it was a bit like, well, they're not available at the moment. Tamiya doesn't have this kit available in the UK. So uh, speaking to Matt, uh, me and Matt basically came up with an idea, we're in port load ourselves and get them in. So we put these on order and lo and behold, after quite a bit of time, they've arrived. Now we had them as a pre-order uh, on the Florian model site. I know a lot of our members obviously bought them directly and unfortunately our first lot pretty much sold out straight away, but there is other ones coming in. And now I finally got my hands on one. Not only can I have a look at the kit, having never seen the kit before, but also a little bit later on in the year, I am gonna build it. So anyway, enough of the talk. Let's have a look what we've got down in here. So as we can see, it's the navy version, as I like to call it. So it's in that gorgeous sort of cream uh, color instead of the normal sort of green. All right, and again, it's a beautiful looking aircraft. And again, Tammy done a fantastic job on its marking selections, okay? Working around actually on the box, you can see kit number for this one is uh, number 60317. Okay, and then obviously down on here, we can see with Tamiya, beautiful detailed engine, cockpit. We've got obviously with the fold up with the actual wingtips if you want to, you get the little bit of photo etch down in there, you get the masking set, all the various things down. And it was the first one that came along with the travel case. So you might remember we've seen that with the F-16 and the various things like that. So, I am now literally the kid in a sweet shop, okay, because I've wanted this kit and now it's just got to live up to all the expectations. So, inside the box we have a piece on the top, as you can see. Now, this is the push-out piece, so the gear would go through and the rest of it, so it's got its travel case, all right? So, keep that bit quite safe, all right? And then down in here, we are greeted by the usual way uh, that Tamiya does it. So we've got the box with all the various bits in there. We'll have a look at that in a moment. And then down in here, you can see separately bagged sprues. Now this kit is a few years old. It's not the, the newest release, obviously. All right, but I have got very high hopes for this particular kit, to be honest. We've got the stand, which is the standard one we've seen with all their 30 second scale aircraft. We do have a pilot figure, again, standing and seated. So that's another nice touch. We've got a little bit of the old mixed media and this looks like it's all stuck together. So we'll just pull that apart. That's the bit we want. Okay, so starting off with, we are down here in the instructions. Okay, and we can get down into here. So, we've got the usual color pull-out sheet with all the marking options, which we might as well just have a look right here. So again, you've got the decal placements and the markings, all right? So that's down in there. Lots of options as well, so that's quite nice. It's not just the usual two. You have got a fair few different options of which ones you want to go through there, so that looks very, very nice indeed. Okay, and then we've got the decals and things, which we'll look at. Now this is that sort of, it's this way, but actually it's this way instruments. Uh, so usual thing, we've got all the design and the details and everything else, a little bit of backstory for you uh, down in here. Okay, and then obviously uh, building, and then we can go through. So on this one, we do have, what have we got? Four, five, six, seven different types of versions down in here. So again, it's probably worth forward while going right the way forward through the actual build, finding out where your 
particular markings will be kit specific, okay? So you wanna make sure you've got the D1s in the right place and the Cs and all things like that, all right? Right the way through. So usual thing, starting off with down on the inside, we're hoping it's not gonna be loaded with ejector pins, okay? But we can have a look. Lots of poly caps, lots of things down in here. We will have moving parts, which is quite a nice touch and then working our way through the actual fuselage, adding all the details in there, bringing it together. Obviously, there is the other version of this kit out there, and that's the difference, will be the spine, okay, running down to the back to the tail. All right, and then obviously into the interior. And this is where Tamiya's, if you haven't seen them, they're legendary uh, Mustangs, Spitfires, and obviously Zeros, things like that, and obviously Corsairs. The detail on the inside is absolutely off the chart, okay? So really, really nice. You're not gonna need any aftermarket really in here. As you can see, loads of details making up all the cockpits and things like that. We have got some photo etch down here for the harnesses, although to be honest, I'll probably go along with a fabric set of harnesses in mine, okay? And then obviously the details for the instrument panel. Remember, there may be specific ones for different things, so keep an eye out for those. Cockpit being fitted in, and obviously to aid the pilot figure fitting in because getting his legs in, which is normally the thing, make sure you get him seated on the seat before you put the rear bulkhead in. That basically is what it's calling out. And then obviously to get him to grip the stick, attaching to the stick before you put his shoulder on, okay, various things. Guns being fitted down onto the forward part there, and then obviously you've got your bulkheads, things like that going in. Cockpit's gonna be a simple slip fit up underneath. Then we've got various things with CA glue because we have got the older style, shall we say, and it is showing its age just a little bit down in here with some of the uh, linkages and things like that for the actual uh, parts, okay? These days they tend to be done slightly different. So control surfaces all being mounted and fixed down in there. So we've got the tails going through, tails fitted to the outside, same with the rudder, the way that that one's going in. And then opening up some holes if you're going to be doing that particular version, pre-painting the underside of the wings. We've got various things going down here like the cooler, things like that into that one. The gear doors which are workable, we say workable in the loosest possible form for this one because I say I do know this kit from other people have built it and said it's a little bit of a nightmare. We'll have a look, we'll see how we get on with that one. And then obviously you've got the gear, the guns being fitted into the wings ammunition, things like that. Wheel wells going right the way through. Again, lots of detail down in here, including working springs, things like that down in there, which is a nice touch. And then making sure you've got the doors hooked in the right place down here underneath, okay? So again, it's just a case of lining all these things up, making sure you're all good. So really, these doors will be workable. Same down in here as well when we're dealing with the gear, things like that, okay? So again, you've got a little tool here for doing gear up, gear down, all right? A little bit gimmicky, as I said, a lot of people have said don't even attempt to do it, but we'll have a look, we'll see how we get on with that one. Then we've got the actual pins running along down in here for the flap section, so that's those being fitted down in there, and then we've got a few other bits and pieces, including down in here with a couple of washers as well, a couple of O-rings, and that's for the mounting of the in-flight display base. Okay, cockpit sections going on. It's talking about various Tamiya tapes for using it for uh, various tips down in here. And then control surfaces for the ailerons and those being fitted on, the flaps being fitted on, and then obviously it's got bombs being fitted, but we're probably gonna put those on afterwards. The gear going together, again, is sort of workable, shall we say. So you've got obviously compression on the springs, various things in there. And then obviously we've got brake lines, all the various bits and pieces being fitted in, placards, details, all those areas for the gear. And then it's talking about having this working gear bit this again just be a little bit careful arrest a hook for actually carrier landings being fitted to the back with the actual tail wheel so those are being fitted on there and again you've got that little key business for actually making it movable then you're into a beautifully detailed engine right the way through so you're going to be stepping through all the little steps on that one building up that gorgeous engine at the front getting that one cowlings again open or closed depending on which version you want to do you do get a mass set but you do have to cut them out to yourself so it might be worth if you wanted to uh, popping out and getting yourself an aftermarket uh, mass set is pre-cut which is a little bit easier okay if you are using these ones always use the arrows make sure they're all pointing in the same direction you'll save yourself a lot of heartache getting them the wrong way around okay cockpit uh, glass being fitted down onto that one the gun sight the various bits pieces being put in then we've got the prop We've got the actual, this area down here at the front, which is what's gonna be the cover for the actual uh, gear. Okay, as well. So those being fitted down into there. Talking about antenna wires, you're probably obviously gonna put those on last, various things in there. Wing tips, obviously they are poseable as well. So depending on which way you're gonna be doing it, you can be fitting those on there as well, just like that. And then we've got actually the bottom 
fuel tank system, which is going to be fitting down up in there, which then I assume will hide the hole uh, for your in-flight display. Obviously, you can't have the tank with the in-flight display, so you'll be having it off. Again, nice little way of hiding that away. A couple of chocks really finishing off the build, as you might imagine, right the way through. And then obviously mounting it up if you wanted to, painting of your pilot figure, stuff like that. And here's the all-important area I've made able to put your kit in the box to keep it all safe, which, to be honest, if you're taking it to shows, isn't a bad thing. Okay, then obviously we've got some more of the placard decals being pointed out, but again, making sure you've got your right version. Pop along with a Sharpie first, just to make sure you're, sure you're all clear. And as you can see, nuts and bolts and washers and various things, making up what is Tamiya's creme de la creme of kits. Now, if we start down in here, we have a little, you've got this little guy at the back, okay, so what this is, is literally for the um, uh, placard for the stand, okay, so you can pop that one on literally like that. And then we have, I'm going to go out the bag, so I don't mind too much because it's my kit, we have the decals. Now the decals you can probably see looking actually quite nice, but the usual thing, when you feel them, they're very, very thick, okay. I know a lot of people well, you know, I don't know, right or wrong, but a lot of people out there do actually now not bother with Tamiya decals because they're just so thick and trying to get them to conform and lie down can be a little bit of a problem. I might just give these a go because they look beautifully done, very nice. So we've got the different colours down in there. We've got all the placards and information obviously down like that. These are your belts, which are not fabric, they're stickers. Okay, I'm probably not going to bother with that. I would highly recommend getting yourself a fabric set. This is your mask set. And again, making sure all your arrows are all pointing the same way if you are using it. Downside is, always with the Tamiya ones, they're not die cut, which was what, you know, you might as well just have a bit of tape. So, yes, you can obviously go around and cut them out from it. But honestly, I think it's probably easier to go off yourself and do it or get an aftermarket one just like that. And again, there's your stand little one as well. Okay, so very, very nice with that. Okay, so I think, purely because I want to, I think we're just going to pop in the box uh, for the moment with my knife. So, And again, this box, don't forget, doubles up as part of the stand system. So you can see the perforations in this, so don't lose your box either. Okay, so down in here we have your photo etch. Okay, can be a little bit thick, I'm not going to lie with theirs. This is all the pins for all the actuators, uh, for all of your control surfaces. You've got those uh, washers, which are for the stand, and you see multiple different types of springs down in there as well, for all the different components from the gear through to all of those. We've got these here, which are the pins for the undercarriage. Okay, so that's those done just like that. And then we've got some lube because we like a bit of lube and a screwdriver, okay? Then on the other side, we've got some strings. So obviously that's for the chocks. And we've got poly caps and some screws and some little bolts in there as well, okay? So a nice little touch down in there. And we've got, this is for the tool system and for the gear. And again, it looks like these are metal done into the plastic, which we'll open up and have a look because I'm not aware of it. I am assuming. Yeah, that's metal, uh, moulded into the plastic for the gear. So again, nice touch with that, giving it a lot more strength. And this is your tool for making the gears go up and down and manoeuvrable and all the rest of it, okay? We've also got down in here a wire. So this is the antenna wire, which is like very thin piano wire. Okay, so there we go, that's quite a nice touch. We've also got the tyres and the brake lines. Yep. which these are loose and there's no giant center seam in these as well which is a nice touch so that's actually quite a good one and again modern tires aren't like the old ones which used to melt over years so you can use them and down in here you've actually got they're nice that they're molded in the shape which is a lot easier than obviously trying to run your own ones down we've got the brake lines going to the gear okay so that's quite nice also down in here we've got the cowlings for the engine top and bottom Obviously, this is the bottom one, and straight off the bat, look at the detail in the riveting. That's going to take a wash beautifully. And we've got the top one for obviously the slots for the guns to come through. 
and then obviously one will then conform to the other. Now there's no magnets in this, the magnets came along afterwards with the Spitfire and the Mustangs. So these have like a clip system and they do actually hold themselves together. So that's that front forward cowling that's done in black on the Zero, just like that, okay? So actually straight off the bat, phew, lovely. That really does look nice. Okay, so where are we gonna go? That's, that's let's, let's start with the fuselage. We always like to start with the big bits. Okay, so the aircraft itself, as we know, it's you know it's not the biggest aircraft. The Zero isn't a very large aircraft at all. So this gives you an idea of the scale of it. So again, this is the thing is, look at the riveting on this. This is why I want to do this aircraft. It will look amazing weathered. Okay, so really very, very nice down in here. Beautiful details with the, you can see here, the strengthening plate running down the back and the areas on that one. That is very, very nice and on this side safe having to flip it around you can see the top of the cockpit details all the areas on there that's looking absolutely amazing then if we just have a general work around on K here you can see all of the engine parts we've got the seats all the little bits around the outsides we've got the bulkhead so it looks like a fuel tank maybe forward fuel tank okay with the bulkhead this is that spine okay to be fitted down in here and I assume this is some type of gun system down on these ones maybe for both the guns on the side or it's the rack and again, very nice. Now on the inside, actually it's not too bad. Again, we've got, you know, my favorite thing with Tamiya clearly is ejector pins. And I know I get a lot of flack for saying it. So I'm not gonna say it on this one because this kit isn't new, you know, just like to, uh, you know, emphasize that. This kit is a few years old now. So it's not cutting edge like we would expect, but it was at the time absolutely razor sharp on the cutting edge. So that looks pretty good. All of that, no problems at all. Okay, where are we going to put all the bits? Right, next up, let's get in the biggest sprues we've got here. This is for the wings. Okay, so straight off the bat when you look at it, it gives you an idea for the feel of the scale now. So you're going to be a little bit more of your wings down. So really you're probably going to be talking around about 40 centimetres. Uh, on the wingspan, so it's not massive. It's going to fit in most people's little display cabinets. If you're like mine, mine's around about 46 centimeters by 30, so it should go in there quite nicely. All right, but again, when you're looking on the close up, this is what we're talking about this gorgeous riveting detail and the plating detail underneath. Absolutely gorgeous. Loads of different stuff going down in here, and lots of access panels and things, as we can see. The only thing is, I, a little bit does look like it's hitting in home. You see these? One there, one there, one there. They are these, which is a little bit worrying, to be honest with you. I wasn't expecting that. You can probably see it all the way down on here. That's all of these. So yeah, a little bit unfortunate about those mold marks. I'm presuming the detail is still on the other side. You can't see it though, that's the thing. So it looks like the riveting goes short, but I'm sure once you get a little bit of primer on this, that's not actually going to be an issue. Otherwise, we'll have to get in there and redo it. Anyway, walking around is say top of the wings again is an absolute joy to behold. Beautiful, beautiful detail. And again, amazingly, look, I'm going to point it out purely because you never see it. Flash. Tamiya kit, flash. But again, a few years old now. Beautiful done. But we've got the control surfaces, the ailerons, all the things. We've got the counterweights down on there. Uh, the forward part for those guns, again, very, very nice. And we do have a little bit of internal details down at the bottom here, things like that. But again, it's a little bit misfortunate with that flash. I'm just pointing that out because I can. But you can see we've got ejector pins in the flaps. Ah, not good, Tamiya. You should know better. In fact, you should know me by now. But again, very, very nice detail there. Okay, so whilst we've just got it here, this is one of the smaller sprues. Uh, if we just go straight into it, as you can see, we've got the prop, okay, and we've got the flaps. So obviously we've got the cow flaps open and closed, which is quite a nice touch for the engine. All of the engine mounts, the parts, all the areas around it, the exhaust systems, the intakes, all the various areas coming off. Cockpit floor as well, which looks very, very nice right the way down here. I think this is some of the electronics equipment down the bottom here. Two types of spinner, again, it's the Army Navy versions on those ones, so that's why you're gonna get a little bit of crossover. But generally, all of those parts, very, very Tamaresque. Again, clean, sharp, 
very nicely done right the way through and there isn't much burring even really on these mounts okay for the engine mounts they're all right that's good nice clean stuff okay so we've got this little bag here okay so this here is h which has got the i do believe this is the recoil areas for the guns and the various parts down in here like that and some of the details for the wing tips or is that the gear not sure actually to be honest looks like tops of the guns but it's gear definitely gear parts down in here so that looks pretty nice indeed very nicely done okay not so many bits i don't know where to put more okay let's go down in here so we've got engine various bits which we'll do next Okay, down in D, as you can see, we might as well just go straight into it. As you can see, beautiful work. That's going to be fantastic. Some very, very nice ribbing for the cooling on the pots for that gorgeous engine. Some of the other parts running down. So we've actually got the exhaust and intakes manifolds down in here. The various things going through, timings, all of those areas. Very nice indeed. Very, very cool. Good job on that. Again, that looks absolutely beautiful. We've got some of the gun parts up here as well. As you can see them. And actually, even the metallic on this doesn't look too bad. Even on camera, it's looking quite nice. Okay, some very good details there. Okay, we've also got down in here in sprue E. So as you can see, lots of stuff going down here. Again, different props, various things. Just make sure you had a good look around first at the build. Okay, but again, beautiful details down in here. And on these different areas as you can see right the way through very very nice there is definitely a crossover between the different types of zeros in here so just make sure you've got them all down packed you know what you're doing we've got the rudder pedals just down in here we've got that fuel tank another spinner all the ones the inside of these wheel wells we'll flip it over in a second have a look the gear doors Again, that I don't think is an ejector pin. That's actually supposed to be there, which is fine. Okay, but that's quite nice for the doors. Flipping over on the other side to have a look round. Again, you have got ejector pins all down in here. So to be honest, the way they are, I don't think it's even worth trying to get them out. You're not really gonna see it in there anyway, but the rest of it's beautifully done. No real flash or anything else like that down in there. That's a very, very cool build. But down on this one, you can see the gorgeous work on that cockpit details for the walls. Again, you could get yourself a little photo etch, color photo etch placard set perhaps, just to pop onto these, give it a little bit more detail. But really, you don't see too much down in these cockpits. And these kits really are good enough straight out of the bat without messing around going down the aftermarket route. Okay, so down in here, we've got the ailerons, more various things. We've got the flaps, we've got more guns, we've got the wing tips, and all these areas on here. Looking very nice. So we've got multiple. So we've got M. So we've actually got the ailerons out on the wings. We've got the wing tips with the brake in them. So obviously they're ready to be used. Then down in here we've got sprue L. This next one down with the various different top panels on depending. Now obviously it's specific to which one. So just again check your references on this one well before you even commit to cutting bits off the sprue. Just so you know where you are with this one. Okay, we've got different rudders, obviously clearly different flaps down in here with sprue N and different cockpit walls. So again, just keep an eye on everything. If you haven't seen it and you're new, have a look at my guide to beginning a model. So it talks about going through instructions and how I look at things and go through and marking things out so you know exactly where you are. This kit's a definite example of it because you've got seven different versions in the box as well as everything else that's going on. Okay, so definitely so it looks like oh, we're not on a match pair with again we've got different ones down in here so down in here we've got sprue r and again looking like a cylon spaceship <laughs> with a bomb doesn't look too bad at all so it is a, a match pair we've got two of these just down in here like that so no real problems with those that's all looking gorgeous as well okay so last up we've got the clear parts so the clear parts themselves being Tamiya's typical style, beautifully done. No problem with any of that. That looks all very, very nice indeed. All of those parts down in there. As you 
can see no problems with any of that. So we're happy there. And the figure. So the figure's a nice little bonus touch to it. So obviously you can have him sat in, or you could have him uh, obviously stood next to it. So depending which one you're doing, obviously we've got Sprue Z, but you can see down in here the detail on all his flight gear and obviously his face. Looking very, very good down in there. Or you got one obviously without the goggles on. To be honest, he looks more of a mature pilot. Just down in there, and obviously he's in the seated position with all the flying gloves and things. Just last up, you've got the standard stand which comes with all of the kits down in there. And there you have it. So I've been waiting for this kit. I think it's been out around about 15 odd years now. I've been waiting for it for that long, wanting to do a really nice zero and everything else. And knowing it's Tamiya, pretty much out of the box, you can turn out with something exceptionally nice. Okay, and again, I don't think it's gonna be very straightforward. Don't get me wrong. I don't think this is just shake some glue in it and away you go. There is gonna be some challenges down into that kit, purely because of the ejector pins that are around in it. Some of them you might wanna take care of. Some of them you're just gonna you know, leave them in there and just go with it. But generally it's one of those kits that you just need to keep an eye on your instructions to know where you're going so mark out your instructions have a little work plan exactly how you're going to tackle it and make sure you don't end up snipping off the wrong part of the sprue and then obviously putting it onto your model only to find out halfway through the build that cockpit wall you've put on is for a different version okay so there's nothing worse than doing things like that we've all been there we've all done it i'm as guilty as everybody else but again it's beautiful stuff from tamia great level of details i said before you don't really have to go running down the aftermarket route I know there is a few bits out for this one. I know there's a lot of people would say, oh, you'll need this, this, and this. But honestly, because of the cockpit, the way it is and things like that, maybe a placard set down in there, a set of fabric uh, harnesses, if you're not having a figure in it, if you are having a figure, you probably get away with not even bothering with any of that and just going straight forward for the build and put your time and efforts into all the gorgeous detail that comes with the kit already. So there we go, that's mine, and it is mine, and I'll be building this later in the year, so watch for this space, but it is the Tamiya 132nd Mitsubishi A6 M2V0 Mark 21.